This is the time in our uh, worship service that believers celebrate communion together. We want to remember and rejoice over the saving work of Jesus through his death and resurrection. The last time that I presented communion, we, were, we went through 1 Peter 1, verses 3 through 5, and I'm going to continue in 1 Peter 1 this morning with verses 6 through 9. And I chose these verses because they not only describe the certainty of our future inheritance, but also how critical it is to continue in faith through trials. So let's pray and then we'll get started. Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit, which you've given to every believer. We thank you for your word, which your Holy Spirit uses to transform us. Help us to remember always that it was your Holy Spirit who gave us your scriptures and the ability to understand them. It is your Holy Spirit who directs us and enables us to apply them to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So our passage again today is 1 Peter 1, verses 6 through 9. Please read with me together. Let's read together. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him, and though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy, inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. I was drawn to this passage because of the word rejoice. Rejoice is used uh, in both verses 6 and 8. The Greek definition for rejoice is to exult, to jump for joy, or to be exceedingly glad. As you remember, uh, Peter is writing to believers who are residing in a place that is known today as Turkey. They are considered strangers and foreigners in this land. They are being persecuted by an unbelieving, hostile world. And they are most likely poor with very limited resources. Peter wants to comfort them by urging them to dwell, not to dwell on their existing circumstance, but to remember God's promise his promise of their inheritance in heaven. Peter is also reminding him, reminding them in these verses to remain faithful to God in trials. So let's look at verse 6. It begins, In this you greatly rejoice. In this is referring to the entire content of verses 3 through 5, focusing on the hope of heaven given to believers. They rejoice now because of the inheritance that awaits them. This joy is not an emotion that changes as circumstances change. It is a joy that's unmoved and comes from having eternal an eternal relationship with God. As we see in verse 7, it is a joy that results from proven faith when encountering various trials. Peter uses the remaining portion of verse 6 to teach us some of the principles about trials. Even though now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. In reference to for a little while, believers are to rejoice despite suffering because they know that it will not persist forever. In verse 6, the phrase, if necessary, is used by Peter to say that trials serve a purpose. God uses trials when necessary for testing our faith. 
As much as we don't like the thought that God's put, God puts trials in our life, Peter in these passages is assuring his readers that God is working out his plan in our suffering. In the gospel primer, it says that God is forcing trials to bow to his gospel purposes and do good to us by improving our character and make it, making us more conformed to the image of Christ. In verse 7, the words proof of your faith relates to God's purpose allowing trials, uh, or his purpose of allowing trials in our life. Why is it God's plan for Christians to suffer? Well, verse 7 provides one of those reasons. Trials test the genuineness of faith, revealing whether or not faith is authentic. Those who truly believe will persist in their faith, continuing to trust in God when difficulties come. If faith proves to be real, the believer will express praise, glory, and honor to God when Jesus Christ is revealed. Verse 7 concludes with the hope of all believers, and that is the revelation of Jesus Christ, his second coming. As we look at verse 8, we see again that Peter is describing our faith. And though you have not seen him, you love him, and though you do not see him now but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. One commentator describes verse 8 in this way. The joy believers experience is a taste of heaven and anticipation of the end because it is indescribable and glorious. Our final verse in this section is verse 9. Obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. As believers, we began in joy of our salvation from the very first day that we were converted, and yet we will not experience it fully until the revelation of Jesus Christ. Believers are to rest in their circumstances because of what they know. In his saving grace, he promised to send his Holy Spirit to, to dwell within us, we know that within, that with the Holy Spirit, we have strength to endure and per persevere through various trials. Our hope is only in Jesus and his Holy Spirit. In a minute, the men will serve us elements to celebrate our salvation and our, relation, our relationship with Christ. Believers, please examine yourselves and rejoice in our risen Savior. Rejoice in the fact that you know him and that he loves you. Rejoice in that he has given us his Holy Spirit, which allows us to have joy and peace to work through whatever trials God has put in our path. Rejoice in knowing that through Jesus, you have been given faith to believe and the strength to persevere through any trial. If today you are here and do not claim Christ as your Savior, we ask that you let the elements pass by. This is a time for believers to remember the work of Christ and what he has done on their behalf. However, we want you to know something. You need to know that God will not turn away from anyone who comes to him through repentance and faith. You must also know that in order to avoid God's wrath, you must be born again. You must believe that the only way to heaven is through faith in Jesus' death and resurrection. It is his death and resurrection that allowed your sins to be forgiven. Cry out to him for faith and forgiveness and let today be the day of your salvation. 
Please do not hesitate to talk with anyone at Grace Bible Church about what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Men, please come and serve us. You may, you may take communion on your own when you're ready, and I'll be back in a few minutes to close this time in prayer.